Here in Studio One, I've already recorded four virtual instruments, piano, bass guitar, some drums, and electric piano. That becomes important later on. Now, if I go ahead and double click on this piano part, for example, it automatically opens the piano roll view at the bottom of the screen, or as it's officially known in Studio One, the piano view. Now, interestingly, if I double clicked on the drum part, for example, it actually would open up the drum view. Studio One is pretty good at guessing what kind of editor you're gonna need for the part that you've clicked on. But if you should find yourself in the wrong view, you can switch using one of these three buttons here. So we can go to the piano view, the drum view, or the score view. I'll switch it back to the drum view for this part, and I'm gonna press F2 on the keyboard to close that view. Now, sometimes you're working with a new instrument like this one here, and there's nothing to double click on to open up the editor. So what I like to do here is actually double click there anyway. It creates a blank event, which you can stretch out to however many uh, bars you want it to be. And if you double click on that, it's gonna open up that piano view with a blank slate to work with. Once it's open, by the way, you don't need to double click on these parts. You can just click on any of them, and it's gonna fill that view with the content from that part. So once you've got this view open, you can see if you hover over the top of it, you can actually stretch it out to whatever size you need. Another thing you may want to do is detach it. You can see over here on the right hand side, there's a little icon to detach it. If I click on that, this now becomes this floating window. This is especially useful if like me, you've got two monitors, you can drag that out and have a really nice workflow if you do that. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm actually going to double click on the top bar of this view and that's going to make it full screen. I'm going to show you later on how you can switch between the different instruments um, in your song without having to go back to the other view. You can leave this on full screen. We'll touch on that later. Now, once you're in this view, if you've ever used the door before with a piano roll, a lot of this is going to be instinctive to you. But even if you're completely new to this, I think some of it is reasonably uh, straightforward or obvious, but I'm going to explain it anyway. So we can see the notes of my piano part here. I'll just play it quickly so you can hear it. And as you may expect, you can, for example, grab one of these notes and drag it around. You can change its pitch, or you can change its timing, move it to a different place like so. Yeah, so I think that's pretty intuitive and straightforward. Another thing that you can actually do, and I'll undo that with Control Z, is change the length of the note. And you do that just by grabbing the end of it, and then you can just drag that out to a different length. So those are sort of a lot of the main things that you'll actually do. Now I should also point out that you can use any of the tools that we can see at the top here and we can apply those to different notes. And if you don't know, you can switch between these six tools by pressing the numbers on your QWERTY keyboard. So one for the normal uh, sort of arrow tool, two there for the next tool, three, four, five, six. You can see me switching between the tools there. The other thing you can do is just right click anywhere um, in blank space here, and you can select one of those tools there. So for example, I could select the, the split tool here and then split this note into two parts. Again, I'll undo that with control Z. Now, another thing that you'll often want to do if you're just using the regular arrow tool is add new notes. And you can simply do that by double clicking anywhere in the piano view. So I'll double click here and that creates a new note, which of course I can drag around to different places in pitch and time. And by the way, we'll touch on velocity a little bit later on. That's how hard the note would have been pressed on the keyboard. Um, but for the moment, you should know that when you create new notes, the velocity is according to whatever settings you have up here um, at the top left. Okay, so I'll get rid of that note. And that is really the absolute basics of using this piano roll or piano view. Hi folks, I'm Mike. 
and I hope you will. So we've already covered the absolute basics of the Piano View, which is actually quite rich in advanced features when you dig into it. We're not gonna go through all of those today, but I am gonna cover some of the more useful things that I think you should know if you're gonna spend a bit of time in this view. So let's get started with some zooming and scrolling. So once you're in this view, you can use the scroll bars at the side and at the bottom to navigate your way way around. You can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse. So you can use that to scroll up and down vertically. And if you hold shift on the keyboard, you can scroll horizontally. You can also use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. If you hold control, if you're on PC or command, if you're on Mac, and then use your mouse wheel, you can zoom in vertically, as you can see there. You can also hold shift and control or command and use that to to zoom horizontally. Now, when you do zoom in far enough vertically, you'll start to see the note names appear on the note. Zoom in further again, and you'll notice that the mouse behavior changes. If I now hover the mouse over the top of the note, you can see it changes, and I can now use it to adjust the velocity of the note by dragging up and down. Or if I hover at the bottom of the note, I can actually automatically split the note at that point as well. If you don't like that behavior and you're in uh, Studio One version six or above, just go up to the toolbar up here and you can see the arrow tool there, long press on that and you can change it to basic. It turns off that extended behavior there. Now you may find that once you're actually in this view, it's a little bit difficult to sort of know exactly where you are in the song because you don't have your sort of usual markers and things like that to help you navigate your way around. That's okay, you can switch some of those special lanes on by going up to this menu at the top here, clicking on that, and you can turn on, for example, the marker lane there. That's gonna let me see the markers. I can turn on my arranger lane there. Uh, that's very handy. And I can also actually turn on things like chords, signatures, and my variations as well. So that's kind of helpful in terms of navigating your way around the song. Quantizing is a process where we take the bars in our music and we theoretically divide them by specific divisions. So we could divide our bars by 2, 4, 8, 16 or 32 for example. We then take the notes that we want to quantize and we move them to the nearest division, making their timing perfect so to speak. Now whether you want to do this or not is another question but let me show you how it practically works here in Studio One on the piano view. So I've got my quantize setting at the top here set to 1 16th meaning each bar is divided by 16. Now I'm going to select a few notes here and I'm going to press Q on the keyboard and you'll notice they shuffle around a bit and they've moved to the nearest grid line, which happens to reflect at the moment my quantize setting. We'll get back to that later. But you can see that those notes just shuffled enough to move uh, to a correct timing. Now for this reason, it's really important that you select the right quantize setting. If for example, I went up here and I selected to uh, divide the bars into half, for example, like so. Then I've got those notes selected. I'll press Q on the keyboard to quantize, and you see that they've moved a long way out of position, a long way from where they were. And that's because I haven't divided the bar enough times for this to work correctly. So it's important to get that right, and it's according to your piece of music. Now, one of the other things that I want to note here, as I alluded to earlier that these grid lines that we can see currently do reflect our quantized settings but they don't have to. So for example, I'll set my quantize back to 1 16th so we can see those original divisions, but we can change the time base up here if we go up here and select, for example, I don't know, frames. So I'll select frames and you can see now that those grid lines have moved around. Now if I go ahead and actually select those notes and quantize them, they're still going to move according to the quantize setting, which is a musical setting 
setting and not according to these grid lines okay so they can be uh, dislocated from each other but for most of us most of the time we probably select bars and would select quantize so that those grid lines reflect our quantize setting likewise snap works in a very similar way but this is where we're dragging things around so to turn snap on i'm going to press n on the keyboard n is for no don't do it so i press that and now as i drag this note around you can see it's snapping to those grid lines okay now we can again not have that happen we can go up to the snap settings up here it's currently set to quantize and we could change this to some other setting if we wish <laughs> you'll notice at the moment that all of the notes are this kind of blue color and if we go to the top to this selector where it says note color you can see currently i have part selected so that means the color of the notes is going to be according to the part which in this case is the piano and we can change its color here by clicking on this color selector so as i hover over these different colors you'll see that the colors of the notes for the part actually change we'll leave it on blue for the moment if we go up to the color selector here the note color selector we can go down and select pitch uh, in this case the notes are colored according to the pitch we can also change it to velocity which means that they'll be colored according to velocity and finally we can change it to scale let's talk about that <laughs> so with our note color set to scale i'd like to draw your attention over on the left to the scale feature and we're going to go ahead and switch it on by clicking on the checkbox here now at the moment our scale is set to c but chromatic this means that every single note on our piano keyboard is available to us okay that's reflected in the grid over here you probably can't see it at the moment but if i change this to c major you'll notice that some of the notes here uh, are darker than others so the darker notes indicate notes that are not within the current scale now interestingly when we start to drag our notes around we find we can only drag them to notes which are within this c major scale So that means that we can sort of make sure that any note movements that we're making are within the current key. Now, if you want to have a note which is outside of the current key, you can use the up and down arrows to move the pitch position of that note. So I'll move it up to a black note there, okay? And if I deselect that note, you'll see that it's currently red. And that's because we had that note color set to scale. And red is just indicating to us that this note is not within the current key signature <laughs> so I've currently got my note color set back to part and I'm seeing blue which is the color of my piano part now I can easily switch to another part without leaving this view by going up to the menu at the top here clicking on the arrow and I could for example change this a 200 electric piano which is green so the notes have changed green there or I could change over for example to the bass which is this purpley color so what if you want to actually use more than one part at the same time well you can do that by clicking on the track list icon up here so click on that that reveals the different tracks and then you can use the little dots to the left of each track to actually view them so for example i've got my bass here i'll click on the dot next to the a200 and you can see in our piano roll view that we can now see the notes for the a200 and the bass guitar now if i go ahead and for example change the pitch of this bass guitar note i can just grab it and drag it like so but if i try and do the same thing for the a200 i can't actually drag it it's just there as a visual reference which is ever so handy if you want to line up sort of timing or create harmonies but there are times when you want to be able to edit both at the same time. So to do that, just go to the top left up here with the track list and make sure the little pencil or edit icon is switched on for both of them. So I'll switch it on there for the A200. And now you can see that as well as being able to drag the bass note around, I can also drag notes from the A200. 
Now, another thing that's really handy with this is if you right click on any selected notes, you can go to transfer notes and actually then send them to another part in your view. So if I want to send this note to the base part, I can do that. And there it is there in purple. Now, one of the important features of this view is the automation lanes. You can see them at the bottom and currently the velocity automation lane is selected. Now, if you want to use this, I recommend you make it bigger by grabbing the top and just dragging it out like so. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these tabs, but some of the more useful ones uh, when you're editing MIDI, uh, a velocity, which we've got selected there, modulation, for example, pitch bend, and the sustain pedal, for example, which I've used in this performance. Now, once you've got a tab selected, you can just drag things around with your mouse as you may expect. So I could grab this velocity line here and drag it up and down. like so and then if I want to select a specific note in that cluster I could select it at the top here for example this note here it's going to be highlighted white and then I can easily drag that around now with nothing selected what I'm going to do is press three on the keyboard uh, to change to this line tool which I've got selected at the moment I'm just going to drag out a line like so yeah and you can see uh, that that has affected those velocities according to the line which I dragged I'll undo that and I just want to demonstrate that if I'm in my normal selection tool and I just select some of these notes here like so those three notes there and I go to use my line tool again it only affects the notes which we've actually selected. So that's worth knowing. Now, looking at some other um, tabs, I'll go over to the pitch bend tab, for example, and I may want to draw in a pitch bend. So again, I'll use the line tool and just do that. I drag out something like so. Sorry, that's a freehand tool I've selected there. That's absolutely fine. So you can see there that I'm able to make some changes there. If I go back to my regular uh, tool, I can just drag those nodes around like so. I could bend lines, etc., etc., to get more normal changes in whatever it is I'm changing. So it's really important uh, lane, the automation lane, and you can really humanize your music by making use of these features. This has been quite a long video, so if you made it to the end here, I'm impressed. Let me know in the comments down below if you did. Use the opportunity as well to let me know if you want me to make a follow-up video about some of the advanced features for the piano view. I'd love to do that for you. A part of that video would be a discussion about macros. And if you want to find out about macros in Studio One in general right away, you can watch this video I made right here.